Now that we've heard, about, that we the have heard about the history of artificial intelligence and machine learning, its beginning and progress over the past decades, we want to shed a bit more light on the current state of the scientific field of machine learning. For the, For the purpose, purpose of simplifying, simplifying the variety of different, different learning, learning paradigms, paradigms and algorithms, algorithms that are part of the machine, learning, of the machine learning sphere, we introduce our own machine learning landscape, our... talking about the different types of learning paradigms and machine learning taxonomy, which will show an overview of algorithm classes that are commonly used in the context of machine learning. To start things off, this video will primarily focus on our machine learning landscape. And in the next video, we will discuss the taxonomy. Machine learning as a domain progressed over the past decades, and with it also many different opinions and views on what a good way of making your machine learn developed. Additionally, as machine learning is very dependent on the underlying data, different situations and objectives require different methods to learn as well. The two most well-known paradigms, which not surprisingly will also be the two we will focus on in this course, are supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In a later module, we will provide a detailed view on both paradigms, but we want to present the rough idea in this video already. Supervised learning works very similar to how you would imagine a boring class of school, for example biology, but with a small twist. Basically, the teacher starts by showing you pictures of different animals, plants, and other living beings, and tells you for each of them what family they belong to. So, for example, you're shown a set of different dog breeds, and for each of them, you're told that the picture shows a dog. Afterwards, the same goes with cats, horses, birds, and so on. But now for the twist. Your teacher does not tell you how to identify them correctly. You will have to find common patterns of their appearance yourself, and what distinguishes them from other families. After you've figured out a hopefully fitting pattern, you are then able to correctly classify new pictures, or maybe not. And this is, in a very oversimplified way, supervised learning. The other paradigm is unsupervised learning. In contrast to supervised learning, you are not told anymore what families the individual pictures belong to. Instead, you have to figure out common patterns and differences between all available pictures and try to come up with your own categorization of families. In this case, it does not matter so much what names the families have, but rather the idea of identifying similar pictures and grouping them together. And after identifying your groups, you can then use the identified patterns and differences to group new pictures into the best fitting category. In between the new paradigms of supervised learning and unsupervised learning, that is having labeled data or not, there are many different methods that try maintaining the advantages of both while finding a solution for some of the drawbacks. In this space, we can find paradigms such as semi-supervised learning, weekly supervised learning, and active learning. In the latter, the goal is to ask some kind of oracle, for example an expert, for the labels of a small number of carefully chosen data points. The goal is to be as label efficient as possible, that is, trying to ask for a small number of labels while obtaining good overall performance. As a side note, in case you have troubles understanding some of the terms that we use, such as label, performance, and so on, those will be discussed in later modules in more detail. Therefore, we encourage you to revisit our machine learning landscape and taxonomy as they point you to several interesting topics that are not part of our course. Coming back to the different paradigms that exist, obviously the notion of supervision, or missing supervision, is only one of many possible ways to define your learning strategy. Transfer learning, for instance, aims at generalizing across different tasks. So what does this mean? To simplify, the model is trying to learn a certain task, let's say classifying pictures of dog breeds, with the intention to find useful patch patterns such as ears, nose, color, and so on. Now the idea is to take this model 
and apply to a different but similar task, for example, classifying cat breeds. The model can now already use the patterns it has learned for the dogs and try applying it to the cat pictures, with the goal to achieve better results than without any pre-existing patterns. Another interesting paradigm is online learning. For all of the previous paradigms we mentioned, we assumed that the learning activity happens offline. This means that we have pre predetermined set of data points, we show those to our model, apply our desired learning strategy, and evaluate how well it performs afterwards. In this case, the underlying dataset does not change over the th course of the learning activity. Online learning, however, allows the learning environment to change at any second. This is possible as online learning tries to employ methods that are able to learn in almost real time. There are plenty of other very interesting learning strategies, such as reinforcement learning, preference learning, transductive learning, representation learning, or structured output prediction. In this course, however, as already mentioned, we will focus on supervised learning and unsupervised learning. If you are more interested in one or more of the other paradigms, you can find some additional information in the related script.